Hi everybody. As the Con 362 class comes to an end, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page here in terms of how the course is wrapping up. I hope by now that looking back over the past few weeks, you recognize that you've really gained a lot in terms of your concept knowledge and your hands-on skill ability in, in the writing of public relations tools. Uh, you should know a whole lot more now than you did just a few weeks ago, and you should have much stronger, more developed skills now than you did just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, admittedly, this was a very busy class. Would I like to have spent more time on the things we did? Yep, I sure would have. But in the summer session, we don't have it to spend. We've got to move on. So I hope you feel like you've gained a lot from the experience. Week five, strategic writing and business communication is what ties this all together. And at this point, you're probably looking back and seeing how all the different areas work together. The, the strategy we talked about at the beginning, and then we talked about um, advertising and public relations writing. We talked a little bit about marketing. And now we're going to talk a little bit about business communication before we wrap up the class. Take a look at the learning outcomes on the study guide that's right below here because I think those learning outcomes are really important. I want, at this point in the class, I want you to be able to identify common business-related write, business writing tools that PR people would use and tasks. You know, in the, in the public relations environment, in the business environment, everything you have to write is not fun. A lot of it is just plain drudgery. Letters and memos and things like that, they're not fun, um, but they are very important to the work that a public relations person does. Be able to, enter, to identify some of those interpersonal skills that are needed. You know, it's great to come out of college with a lot of public relations expertise, but if you don't have the interpersonal skills to allow you to work with other people in a team situation, you're really lacking. And that's why... Uh, in part, the team work is part of this class because it is so important to be able to work in a team. And, you know, I know sometimes you go, oh, I hate working. I'd just rather do it all by myself. You know, uh, I'm kind of that way. I would kind of like to do stuff all by myself. But it doesn't work that way. In the PR environment, we have to work in teams. So we've got to have those interpersonal skills that give us the ability to work in a team environment. I want you to recognize the ethical sensitivity that's needed when engaging in business communication. We have assignment, an assignment along those lines this week. It's the Lumber Camp Ethics Assignment. You can't just go into that like a bull in a china shop and say, here's what we're going to do, boom, 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 um, because you'll cause problems. And in fact, it could be argued that the two employees uh, who brought about the feature story from the, the employee that had the former substance abuse problem, it might be argued that those two employees perhaps were not quite as ethically sensitive as they ought to have been. So I want you to develop a lot of ethical sensitivity in the workplace because getting work done and getting it done quickly is one thing, but when you steamroll over people's feelings to do it, you're creating a real bad situation. And I think I've said this already in one of the videos, but I'll say it again. Every decision is an ethical decision. Every decision you make is an ethical decision because it all comes back to values. And do your values align or not align with the people that you're making decisions about? So we have to, we have to think about that. Um, also, the last of the learning outcomes, I want you to be able to produce a persuasive and error-free resume that will be housed in an electronic portfolio because ultimately, all of this college education is great, but let's be honest, you're here to get a job, and you're here to get a good job, and you're here to get the training that'll get you a good job. So while it's great, you know, learning for learning's sake is valuable, you're also doing this for a purpose, and the purpose is to enter the career workplace. And so you've got to have a persuasive and error-free resume to do that, and increasingly, you've got to have an electronic portfolio to do that because the degree is important, but mostly employers want to know what you can do. I just had this conversation the other day with somebody. Is the GPA important? Yeah, the GPA is important, but employers want to know what you can do. 
And if you're a 4.0 GPA person and you have no work samples to show, no portfolio, you're not going to get an interview and you're probably not going to get a job. On the other hand, if you're a 3.3 GPA person and you've got great stuff to show that you know how to do this work, you're going to get a job. <coughs> Excuse me. I was the 3.3 GPA person. That was my undergraduate GPA. I've never been out of work. I've always had a job because I've always had a portfolio of work. I've always had developed skills, even though my GPA was not the best that it, that it could have been. Okay, so let's talk. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about a study guide per se because we've kind of covered most of the concepts already. Um, go back and look over the calendar. Go back and look through Titanium. See the concepts that we've covered already because the quiz this week is going to be comprehensive. It's going to have questions from the entire uh, breadth of the course. So um, go back and do a little bit of review and make sure you understand the things that we've, um, that we've addressed so far. I do want to talk about the assignments this week. First, the resume and the portfolio. What you can do is an indicator of what you know. And so it's really important to have a resume that shows you're a competent, capable professional. Writing a resume is a skill set in itself. If you haven't seen Cassandra Thompson in the Career Center, you need to go because you've got to get guidance from her. During the regular semester, she's got lots of uh, workshops and drive-through resume things, so you've got to talk to Cassandra, and you have to get some guidance on your own. I recommend that book in the syllabus, the Betsy Hayes Tori Terhune book. Get that book. It's really good, and indirectly it will help you with your resume. There's another book that's really good called What Color Is Your Parachute? What Color Is Your Parachute? Is the book that's been out for a million years. It's in like the 290th edition now or something like that. It's really good too. It's, it's, it's really good. So you got to get that help. You got to have a resume that is killer because if you don't, you're going to struggle. It's got to be absolutely, completely error-free. You would be amazed at some of the resumes I look at. Some of them are just amazing. Some of them are killer. And some of them are dead, okay? Some of the resumes I see are DOA, dead on arrival. You would not, you would not believe, okay? Let's talk, let's talk. You would not believe the number of students who don't know the name of this university. They don't. They call it California State University in Fullerton, California State University of Fullerton. I've seen it called University of California at Fullerton. Come on. This is where you're getting your degree. You got to know the real name of this university. If you don't, oh my God, if I were hiring for a position and you didn't know the correct name of the university, done, done. I'm not even going to look at your resume. Um, you, you've got to, you can't have any errors in the copy. You've got to know what your degree is. I've seen a whole lot of resumes saying people are majoring in public relations. No, you're not. There is no public relations major in this department or anywhere else on campus. Check it out. Your diploma will not say public relations. There is a name of this department, and public relations is not a focus area. It's a concentration. Your degree is communications with a concentration in public relations. So you got to have on your resume the exact way the degree is, is named. So those are the just a couple of things you got to know. And, and um, so there's lots of other things too. But, you know, I don't teach resume building per se, but I look for you to go out on your own and gather those skills and build a killer resume because I really want to see that. I want to see it linked on portfolio because employers want to see electronically what you can do. And we've provided portfolio for you. It's a really good platform. It's not pretty, but it's a really good platform. It's easy to use. Please do that. Um, the Lumber Camp Ethics Assignment, again, Ethics and interpersonal communication is so important, and so in this assignment, you're telling me what went wrong here and how you ought to fix it, and so woven through that is the thought of interpersonal communication. What needed to happen here that didn't happen? Tell me a story. Tell me a succinct story. Don't go on and on and on and on. Tell me a succinct story so that I can see you get communication in a business environment. The customer response letters. Your team is going to work on these. Customer letters are so important because you can piss off people so easily with a letter that hits them the wrong way or 
a letter that you write and you show that you really don't understand their problems or their needs or whatever. So look at that handout I've got in Titanium, Swanson's Letters handout. It's about the, the yes letters, the no letters, the blame letters, the sales letters. It's got examples with it. That's a really good handout. It'll really help you a lot because writing a letter is just, it's a skill. It's such an important skill. When you get a letter in the mailbox and it's addressed to you, you know, you look at that and you take it very personally. And if somebody spells your name wrong, done, all bets are off. If they can't even spell your name right, I mean, come on. Um, they gotta spell your name right, they gotta hit you right with the right persuasive kinds of things. You would you would be amazed at some of the, I get pitch letters all the time. People trying to sell me stuff, textbooks and curriculum supplies and stuff like that. I get so many badass letters. I mean, and not badass in like a badass kind of way. I mean, badass like badass, like they suck, okay? So um, it's, it's just amazing. And I've been on dozens of search committees. I've been on dozens of search committees, hiring staff members and, and, and faculty members. And I tell you, when we get a bad, a bad resume or a bad cover letter, we don't even consider that person for employment because I'm not gonna hire somebody to come in and teach you guys some person who writes a sucky resume or a sucky cover letter. Uh-uh, no way. We have shit canned uh, cover letters and resumes right off the bat because obviously these people have a degree and they can teach and they don't know how to write. And I'm sorry, that ain't gonna do it. So I don't mean to sound, uh, you know, like elitist or snotty or exclusive or anything like that, but writing skills are important. And if you can't write well, if you can't write a persuasive letter and a really good looking resume, then you need to hone your skills because you're just not gonna have the opportunities in life that you would otherwise have. So spend a lot of time with that letters handout this week, it's really important. And keep a copy of that for future reference because you know, when you're writing letters in the future, you're gonna wanna go, oh, Swanson had a handout about that. I had to write a bad newsletter. How can I do that? I can go back to my handout and look it up. I mean, hey, do that. Because I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. So anyway, um, are, are these video messages getting more informal and sloppy as we go along? Or is it just me? I don't know. So anyway, um, that's what we got going on. We're, I, I'm, I'm looking to wrap up this class really strong. I'm really glad that you participated in this class and you learned a lot. And I really want you to take these handouts and, and all of this knowledge on from here because what you've learned in this class is so important when you get to the capstone and, and before that. But when you get to the capstone, you know, if you're a PR student, your capstone options are gonna be 464 or 474, the student run agency. And by God, if you come to the student run agency, I'm gonna make you write and you're gonna to have to write really good or I'm gonna say, you took 362 from me. Where did this come from? And I'm really going to hold your feet to the flame and make you write good. Because if you write well, you will never be unemployed. You will always have a job and people always will respect you. That's what we want of our graduates. So, okay. Have I covered enough? I think I have. So, as always, if you got any questions, you know where to find me. Thanks a lot.